Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today on this Monday, February 6th of 2023. Glad you're here with me for a little time in God's Word on this Monday morning. Get the week started off on the right foot. Well, hopefully you went to church yesterday and so the day has already started off on the right foot. Uh, the week, that is. Good morning, everyone who's chiming in and everyone who is behind the scenes. We'll take a look here at a moment who's here with us. I was a little surprised that uh, the, the hymn today, um, For All Your Saints in Warfare, usually a hymn played for a uh, commemoration, but there's no commemoration today. So I guess whoever was deciding the hymns just decided that was a good hymn for today. I'm really not sure what the... What, oh, wait a minute. Maybe... Oh, it's because the New Testament text paired for today is the calling of the disciples. So I guess that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So, good morning. <clears throat> sunny here, yeah, well, it was sunny. Now it's kind of overcast. Here in Wisconsin, um, warming up. We're, we're almost above single digits. Um, it's, uh, according to the weather service right now, it's nine degrees here where I am. Um, I haven't looked at our thermometers. I'm betting they're a little higher than that. <clears throat> mm, good morning. That's clearing out here. Um, but yeah, supposed to be up to like 40 by Wednesday and then snow on Thursday. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, earthquakes. I, I saw, and now I forgot where they were, but I saw AccuWeather said we had some major earthquakes in the world um, yesterday or last night, which is interesting. I was watching, a, I think I mentioned it on Saturday, a Beijing scientist talking about um, the Earth's core stopping its movement, and the result of that is is Earth increased, increased seismic activity as that core stops rotating one direction and then begins to rotate the other direction. Um, I don't understand the science, but, you know, it is what it is. It, it was what it is. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you. Renee, good morning. Uh, Jerry, good morning. Yeah, you guys are warmer over there. I see Renee says warmer, and, and uh, you're telling us 30 degrees over there, Jerry. That, you know, that for me, that would be warm right now. Kathy, good morning. Wettstein, Karen and Mike, good morning to you guys. 76, wow. Someday maybe I'll take a vacation to Florida midwinter. Of course, then I'd spoil it. I'd have to come back here. Ann, Deb, and Grant, good morning to you guys. Verna, good morning. Connie and Robin, good morning. Furnace never kicked in all night. Well, all right. That that tells you something right there, that it's, that it's warmer without a doubt. I'm going to refresh because I'm pretty sure there are more people watching than the comments I've seen. Yep, there we go. There's Glenn. Good morning to you, Glenn. And Jill and John, good morning to you guys. Oh, Turkey and Syria. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. The earthquakes were in 7.8 or something like that, which is a fairly significant uh, earthquake. So we'll include that region in our prayers as well um, today. Uh, yeah, Bonnie's got 18, she's saying 18 degrees. So that's probably our thermometers, not the weather service. <clears throat> Thankful we have more than one vehicle. Yeah, her alternator went out. I've got a, I've got it on order, but it'll be Wednesday or Thursday before it gets here in the weekend before I have time to change it out, probably. And that little Ford of hers has an ill design. The alternator is behind and underneath the engine. So I basically have to drop the subframe of the car down in order to to make the repair, which is just utterly insane in my book, but um, you're kind of stuck, you know. All right, let's. Uh, so, good morning to, to you guys and to all of those watching in the background. Glad you're spending a little time with us. Let's go ahead and get into the into the meat of this. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. I have my Treasury of Daily Prayer right here as we begin on this Monday morning. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our psalm today, Psalm uh, 77, uh, verses 1 through 3, 7 through 12, and 15. It's kind of <clears throat> divided up here for Psalm, psalm 77. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is, out, is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the ears of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your works uh, and meditate on all your mighty deeds. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> A fitting psalm to go with the um, reading from Job that we have today. Um, and, you know, this is, again, the psalms are, this, are prayers and, and songbooks of the, of the Bible. And uh, um, this is this is what the despairing and distraught do. I cry aloud to God and aloud and to God, and He will hear me. Um, but we still feel the suffering that we're in the midst of. We know that God hears, um, and and we question: Will He hear? What does He know? Does He hear my moaning? Um, will He spurn me forever? Will I will I have to struggle with this? Whatever this is forever? Will my, my life be uh, despair and anguish all my days? Um, has his steadfast love ever ceased? Forever ceased in our promises and an end? But at the end of the psalm, the, the psalmist re remembers the deeds of the Lord, right? That his faithfulness doesn't fade, that his faithfulness is forever. That even when it feels like to us there's a problem, um, God is there. Remember the works. Remember the things that he has done. Remember how with his arm he redeemed the people of, of Jacob and, and Joseph um, and how he's redeemed us through Christ. Um, his time frame is not always ours, right? God doesn't always work in the time frame that, that we want, uh, but he, he does uh, his good and gracious will uh, in the time that he, he uh, determines. Um, and part of the life of a Christian is suffering. That's what's interesting about reading Job, because that's, our, you know, our, our life in this world, because of the sinful nature of the world, is not perfect. If it was, the Lord of life, Christ himself, would not have been crucified. But he was. He suffered and died for you. And so we, though we still suffer in this world, for his name's sake. We, we bear our crosses. Um, we have that confidence and that knowledge that he is always there. Here's our prayers. And um, on the final day, if, if we must wait that long, on our last day, he will rescue us from the places of sin, death, and hell. All right, let's move on to our reading from Job. Speaking of Job, we jumped a chapter here. We're in chapter three now, starting in at uh, verse 11, Job chapter 3, verse 11 to verse 26. Oh, it's really not that long. <clears throat> if, if the psalm hadn't pushed it, it would have been just one column on the page. So, Job chapter 3, starting at verse 11. Why did I not die at birth, come out of the womb and expire? Why did the knees receive me? For why the breast that I should nurse? For then I would have lain down and been quiet. I would have slept. Then I would have been at rest with kings and counselors of the earth who rebuilt ruins for themselves. 
or with princes who had gold, who filled their houses with silver? Or why was I not as a hidden stillborn child, as infants who never see the light? There the wicked cease for troubling, and there the weary are at rest. There the prisoners are at ease together. They hear not the voice of the taskmaster. The small and the great are there, and the slave is free from his master. Why is light given to him who is in misery, and life to the bitter in the soul, who long for death, but it comes not, and dig dig for it more than hidden for and dig for it more than for hidden treasures? who rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they find the grave? Why is light given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? For my sighing comes instead of my bread, and my groanings are poured out like water. For the thing that I fear comes upon me, and what I dread befalls me. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, but trouble comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> why did I not die at birth? Why is my why is my suffering in this world so great? Why why could it not even end before it began? Why did why did the knees of my parents receive me? Why did the breast of my mother why was it presented to me that I might nurse and live? Why, why, why? Why can I not be like the kings and counselors of the earth who rebuilt ruins for themselves and are now God? With the princes who had gold and who filled their houses with silver, but now are dead. Why was I not hidden as a stillborn child, as infants who never... You know, this is despair, Right? This is despair. This is a, and now, uh, where is Job? Let's remember, um, everything has been taken from him. Now, uh, everything was taken th from him, but because of his faith in God, he did not curse God for what had happened. But he's lost his, his, his wealth, his property. Well, his his houses, his crops, his children have all been taken from him. And yet he remained faithful to God. But now he begins to ask that question. And I don't remember if we're into the ash heap yet or not, because we, well, oh, that's why we jumped, because we missed sat Sunday. Um, give me a moment here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we missed the second phase where Satan is allowed to attack Job's health. Right, so after everything else was taken from him, uh, Satan went back to God, and God said, "said Yeah, but you're still protecting him." And God said, "Fine, you you, you may you may do whatever you wish to him, but not kill him." Um, and so boils came upon his skin, and disease, and illness. And um, uh, at the end of all of that, he's sitting in an ash heap, and his three friends now come and begin to speak to him. Um, in, in his suffering. Um, yeah, they saw that his suffering was very great. And, and here we're hearing the lament of his, of his even having been born. If God was going to allow this to come upon me, why was I even born? He was born so you could grow in faith towards him. So your trust would be not in yourself, but in our Heavenly Father who sent his son to die for you. It's the same reason today. Suffering is great in the world. Christ has come. He's been crucified. And if the world could do this to him, then what? Well, Jesus himself says it. What If they do this when the, when the wood is green, what will they do when it's dry? <clears throat> Suffering is great in this world, not because God is not good and not because... Um, <clears throat> Christ did not die for us. Suffering is in this world because we are, man is, wicked at the root. And there is greed, and there is um, um, hate, and there is anger, and there is murder, and there is death 
and there is suffering. And that's part of the package. Uh, although those in Christ Jesus know the end of their day, uh, remember the steadfast love of the Lord. Remember the mighty works that he did. Remember how he saves you with his strong right arm through Christ. And yet still there are those who are outside of that, and, and there is sin, and there is all the other things that go with that. And so suffering remains. Um, and we suffer for for Christ's sake. Um, we suffer with him, and he suffers with us. And there there is an answer to that, right? That by reason or strength, we live 80 or 85 years, and then we are with Christ. And by faith in him, we remain in him. And we have that promise. And in that promise, all suffering ends. And when you realize that the suffering that you endure uh, is done to the glory of God, and not for your own glory, then it takes on a different form. There's a writing here from Luther that's attached today. <clears throat> and and I, I read it before you guys joined me, um, and I, I couldn't quite attach it, but now it makes more sense. There's two types of theology in this world, right? One is wrong and one is correct. Um, uh, but there's two types of theology, a theology of glory and the theology of the cross. And this is one of the things that, that Luther and, and, and the, the, the faith as Luther uh, shared it with us, shared it with the world as he wrote, um, that becomes a strong emphasis. Luther is certainly a man who was under great suffering uh, as uh, the papal bull excommunicating came out, uh, followed by the order for his death. Um, <laughs> interesting, the Pope put out a call for the death of a man. I suppose it's because he considered him a heretic, or at least a danger. Here, 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 Luther writes this, A theology of glory calls evil good and good evil. A theology of the cross calls the thing what it actually is. This is clear. He who does not know Christ does not know God hidden in suffering. Therefore, he prefers to work, he prefers works to suffering, glory to the cross, strength to weakness, wisdom to folly, and in general, good to evil. These are the people whom the apostle calls enemies of the cross of Christ. For they hate the cross and suffering and love works and the glory of works. Thus they call the good of the cross evil, and the evil of a deed good. God can be found only in suffering and the cross, as has already been said. Therefore the friends of the cross say that the cross is good, and works are evil. For through the cross works are destroyed, and the old Adam, who is especially edified by works, is crucified. It is impossible for a person not to be puffed up by his good works unless he has first been deflated and destroyed by suffering and evil until he knows that he is worthless and that his works are not his but God's. We're saved by the cross. We're not saved by the good works that we do. The good works that we do come from having been saved by the cross. There are those not under the cross who do things that they think are good, but when they do them, they are evil, even if they appear good. Um, because what they do is the one who does them believes that they make, make themselves a greater person. But we are made great in the suffering of the cross. We are made faithful by looking to Christ for our salvation and not to ourselves. Suffering is a necessary part of our faith because it shows us who we are before God, poor miserable sinners in need of his grace and his salvation, which he delivered to us, not uh, delivered to us as a free gift, but not uh, by simply giving it to us, but by the suffering and death of his only begotten son. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Almighty God, 
By your grace, the apostle Andrew obeyed the call of your son to be a disciple. Grant us also to follow the same Lord Christ in heart and life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Don't put the book away. You weren't done yet. Let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, oh, I know what it is. I want this. Um, prayers for ourselves and others on this Monday morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have delivered me from the darkness of night and brought me safely to the light of day. As my day begins, scatter the darkness of sin in my life. Remind me that I do not belong to sin, death, or the devil. I belong to you. You have claimed me as your own dear child in the waters of holy baptism. You have marked me with the cross of Christ on my forehead and on my heart. You have clothed me with the light of your salvation. I am yours. Help me to live as your child, diligently and faithfully doing the work you have prepared for me to do this day. Let the fruit of my labor be used to care for the lonely, distressed, poor, homeless, underemployed, and unemployed. Give me a spirit of patience, kindness, peace, and gentleness. May all I say and do be pleasing in your sight and declare the excellence of, excellencies of you who have been, who have called me out of darkness and into the light of your salvation. Bless the leaders of our nation and all who live in it. Give your wisdom to those in authority so they may rule with integrity and honor for the good of your people. Teach me as your child and lead a, to lead a peaceful and quiet life to your praise and honor and glory this in Jesus name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with all who suffer under conflict or, or uh, natural disaster, and especially this day, be with the people in Turkey and Syria as they uh, recover from, well, from the world which shook around them. Uh, provide them with comfort and remind them always of the promise that you offer in your Son, that all suffering leads to the cross, and that by faith in the cross, suffering and despair is, is quieted and calmed. Be with those who are suffering in body, mind, and soul as well, whether it be illness, age, or injury. Especially this day, we pray for uh, Mushtaq's brother, Shazad, for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Ashley, Renee, Jeremy, John, and all those who are in need of your, uh, your strength and your comfort, grant it, Lord, for the sake of your Son, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, 
that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our Monday morning devotions to a close. God's peace be with you. And uh, keep keep those in Turkey and Syria in your prayers. And, uh, yeah, God's peace. And we'll see you back here uh, tomorrow. God's peace.